right, welcome back everyone to another um, episode of Talk 122 with your superintendent, Dr. Terrell Yarbrough. With me um, is a, a very, 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 um, I would say, um, inspirational guest that we're gonna have on today and, and, and get to uh, talk with her a little bit about the process and things of that nature of, of writing, I believe, your second book, which is, which is outstanding. So for the audience that do not know you, can you give your name, um, year in school, and then we'll go from there. Hi, I'm Kennedy Myers and I'm a sophomore. Okay, so let me ask you this. I always wanna start out with a question that kinda gets it like, like going, right? And mm -hmm. so when I think about your love um, you know, for writing, right? What, what was your inspiration? I don't know if I really have an inspiration. I've just been writing since I was little, short stories and okay. things like that. Okay, okay. So when you, when you say when you were little, like short stories, like starting out, like your earliest recollection of, you know what, this is fun, I like this. What's your earliest thing you can think of? Probably when I was seven. When you were seven? Third grade, probably. Third grade, okay. And so when we were talking, you said you attended Ralston, right? Mm -hmm. So third grade, who was your teacher? Can you Mrs. Remember? Spears. So shout out to Mrs. Spears, okay? Because I, <laughs> I will, I would like to hope that she had something to do with kind of like you know, inspiring you a little bit. And so just thinking about, because um, this is your second book, yeah. so talk a little bit about your first book and and that process of, from you know, in the story, um, to writing it to getting it published. Talk about that a little bit. So I started it in late seventh grade. Okay, seventh and grade, yeah. wow, okay. <laughs> I just got this idea and I was like, you know what, I wanna commit to this, because I never really finished my short stories when I was younger, okay. and I was thinking, I wanna commit to this. And so I just kind of started searching on YouTube for all these people who write. Okay. And I saw a bunch of videos on like process and how to outline your book and where to go from there. And then I just started writing and I stuck to it as much as possible. And I finished it about a year later in eighth grade okay. and quickly edited it and found a little publishing site called Lulu Publishing and okay. I published it. All right. And so did you do any book tours or anything like that? For the first one, no, I did not. For the first one, no, you did not. Okay, so going into now your second book. Oh, this is awesome. And I got my own <laughs> signed copy too. So um, let me see if I can open this real quick. This is awesome here. So be jealous. You'd be jealous. <laughs> so with your second book and um, kind of with your first process, um, what inspired you to write this one? I just wanted to keep writing. I was kind of in a little bit of a writing slump after I published my first book. Okay. But then, I don't know what came to me. I was just like, I, I need to start writing again. And I I was in creative writing, actually, with okay. Mr. Schwitters. All right. And Shout just, out to Mr. Schwitters yeah. as well. <laughs> we okay. just started like free writes all the time. And okay. I kind of came up with this idea last February. And I was like, I need to go with this. OK. So when you, so when you say you, you had a little writer's block, so what, eighth grade to to what, ninth grade? Like, that's a short little block there. Yeah. Me, I mean, it takes me a while when I'm in the block, so that's good. That's good writing. And so tell us a little bit about this story. So this story is about a girl named Tamara who, okay. before the book is like started, she got into a crash with her teammates, a bus crash, and she is the only survivor. Okay. And she moves schools to like try and restart her life and she makes new friends but the grief is obviously really mm -hmm. really hard to deal with um, but she thinks she's trying to make her way back through her life and starting over until something big and unexpected happens and her life is thrown upside down for a second time okay all right wow that's a that's a deep story yeah. <laughs> and and but but i'm sure because i can't wait to read it and I'm gonna crack it open during our, our holiday break here and, and go for that, so that's good. So, um, like tours and things like that, signing, um, talk to us about how that looks. So I did my first signing a couple weeks ago, it was at a little cafe in Rockford called Magpie, and okay. that one, that was a pretty good start. Okay. Pre pretty good start, and I plan to do more. There's one set up in March at Goodwill, and I'd love to do more, like maybe one here or at other bookstores. In Okay. The community. So, so let us let the community know um, if there's one thing 
that you would like for them to know about you or, or the writing process, anything like that, let the community know. What would, what would you like them to know about you? Um, I just, I take pride in my work okay. a lot, in my schoolwork and in my writing, and I just love what I do. <laughs> okay, okay. So I, I like to, to do this a little bit. So your favorite person in the district, the whole district, from your time at Ralston to the middle school to now your favorite person. That's a hard <laughs> that one. That stumped you a little bit. I, after yeah. writing like two, <laughs> two books, that was the question that stumped you. Okay. Mm, I really love Dr. Jewel. She okay. worked at the elementary school. She's retired now, yeah. but she uh, did like advanced reading groups okay. with the kids and I loved everything I did in her groups. That is awesome. All right, so another shout out there. And so so we know you you love books, right? We know you love writing. We know you love reading, right? Mm -hmm. So give us your favorite book that you didn't write. Oh my gosh. That's also a loaded question. Okay. There's this whole series. It's called the Shatter Me series. Okay. I love them all. Okay. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the Shatter Me series because I'm not familiar with that one. Well, it's about a girl who like, uh, she has this like special ability where her touch kills people okay and it's like her development through that in this like almost post-apocalyptic world but not quite is like a post-war and um the earth is separated into these different sections and it's like it's very strict mm -hmm. and so she's going through that um I like like the third and fourth books of the series. The writing is something I specifically like, okay. and that's why I love reading them, is because of the, the author's writing is just so unique, and it makes you feel things. Okay, mm -hmm. so, we, so we, we say that, because that, that's interesting to me, um, because any, like with any good song or, or mm -hmm. any good book you pick up, um, for me personally, like you got, I gotta feel it, right? You know, yes, it has to exactly. has to mean something. So, so tell us about that series, and, and when you say you feel it, what do you feel? What does the author make you feel? I mean, the author makes me feel all the emotions. Okay. Like there's times I wanted to throw the book across the room, and other times where I was like okay. smiling and laughing. And then like the writing specifically, the way she words things and the analogies she uses is just something I've never seen before. Okay. So the writing is better than like a Marvel movie then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Although I like Marvel movies, this is, uh, okay. So you're a sophomore, right? Mm -hmm. What do you want your legacy, and I'm gonna get a little deeper in this one. What do you want your legacy to be when you like, you're, you're walking across the stage, you now, hopefully that's your fourth book <laughs> as you walk across the stage. What do you want um, students to remember you and staff to remember you by? Like, what do you want them to say about you? I want them to remember me as like probably the only author in this school by okay. the time I graduate. Hmm. Okay. So how can anybody who wants to pick up a copy of this, how can they get it? Um, Amazon or the Barnes and Noble website, both of them. Okay. So you can get it. All right. So for the for the young, um, inspiring um, dreamers who want to write one day, what bit of advice can you give them? Say. If you have an idea, go with it because you can only get things done if you actually stick to it. And I believe that anybody who has a dream or a goal can accomplish it with good hard work. That was outstanding, Kennedy. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for being on. Any mm -hmm. um, parting words or you're good? I think I'm good? All right, thank you. I'm really proud of just all of the amazing things our Harlem students are doing. Um, but in this particular case, the spotlight's on you. And so can you tell the audience, for those who don't know you, I'd be surprised if a lot of people don't know you, but for those that don't know you, um, can you just give them your name and then the year that you are here at school? Yeah, so um, I'm McKenna. Um, everybody, my socials know me by McKenna Faith Winters. Okay. Um, I will graduate in 26. Okay. Um, right. And I have a singer, not songwriter yet, hopefully. Okay. Um, an artist. Okay. All right. So, which is, man, it's exciting, right? I mean, yeah. when, I was, when I was younger, and I never really tell people this, but when I was younger, I used to always have that dream to write. Um, and I used to write, like, songs, and I would base them off, like, different, like, I would hear, like, um, 
like a Michael Jackson song, and then I, I would write to that song. But then I was like, yeah, I don't think this is right, <laughs> the right way to do it. Um, and so I kind of get got away from that. that yeah, bit. that was me when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I I remember. Um, Writing a song and uh, like, Dad, can can I record this? Uh, oh, I remember it wasn't good. Gotcha. I rem I kind of remember it wasn't good. <laughs> All right, and so now, so now, fast forward though. Now you're, uh, um, from what I'm hearing, you're performing, you know, in front of crowds. You're. Um, doing interviews, um, things of that nature, which we're all proud of. So can you tell the audience a little bit of, of how, take them a, you know, kind of like a, a peek behind the curtain of, of like your life when, when you're talking about singing and things of that nature? Um, I, don't, I haven't done a whole lot of singing okay. in front of people. I mean, I get nervous every single time I do. Okay. Um, it's hard to believe though, <laughs> just looking at you right now. But yeah. That's what, okay. Um, I, I kind of just love doing it. Like, um, I had a thought before that I was like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore, and then things okay. started blowing up, and I'm like, okay, this could be a big thing. Like people mm. think people really like it. Okay. Um, so I, I'm going along with it. <laughs> just letting gotcha. it go. Gotcha. Gotcha. And that, but that's, but you know what? That's that's how you, you know, when you're doing what you love, mm -hmm. you know. And, and I was I was talking to someone the other day, because um, my daughter she performed in the Nutcracker um, this past weekend, and I'm just looking at, you know, like all of the, the 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 actors and actresses and they're on stage um, and they don't seem like they're nervous and not missing a, a step but when I think about it and I really thought about it and reflected on it it's because they love what they do right mm -hmm. so I would imagine that's how it is with you you love it so much that it just becomes like you, it's just you just who have you are, to do it right? now like there's yep. no stopping okay it's getting yep. bigger and bigger every single time I have a step forward so. okay so so tell us this um, um, who's your inspiration as far as when you're when you're thinking about like singing or performing? Because um, I, I I always look at you know different singing shows and things like that, like American Idol, right. um, and you always hear like the the judges and they'll say like stage presence and you know and all mm -hmm. those things. So who inspires you? Um, you probably don't know her. her name's Avery Anna. Okay. She's becoming bigger and bigger. I've followed her along the way. Okay. I just watch what she does, and she's a great person. She has a great personality. She's great with her her people, her fans, mm -hmm. and that's just kind of what I want to be. Okay. Now, what's her genre? Uh, country, country, country pop. So, yeah. Because it sounds like I should know her. Then, if you're mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're if you're loving her, it sounds like I should know her. Okay. So then, so then when you're when you're on stage or when you're singing. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about your emotions, you know, during that, that time. Oh, I get really nervous. Okay. I, last few times there's only been a few people in the, we were downtown Nashville in the bars and stuff. There's only been a few people in there. The first time I did it, there was a lot more people in okay. there. But they honestly, they made it more fun. They were cheering me on and I That's actually cool. was less nervous because they were so like excited about mm -hmm. it. Like, oh, there's a 14 year old on, up on stage. Okay. And I, as I went along with the song, they started cheering and more and more, mm -hmm. and I became less nervous about it. Okay. So. Okay. So a little birdie told me, um, or share with me, um, a few of your successes thus far, right? And so you've got some number one singles. I can, do. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, so the funny thing is they're not in the U.S. Okay. Every place, every country but the U.S. wants to play it right now. Mm. So like, interesting, right? <laughs> like um, the U.K., Australia, mm. Canada. Okay. I think it was the U.K. What some of them were number one. Okay. Um, that's good. I'm, right. I have. I, yeah. So I'm bad about reading all that stuff. That's a, that, um, and that's okay. <laughs> um, but it's number one though. Right. So that's good. Yeah. Right. At at one point, I had two of my songs that were number one and number two at the same time in okay. one of those stations. Okay. So it was. It was a lot. It was fun seeing that. Gotcha. So for when you when you think about um, the the individuals who could watch this podcast and who probably will watch this podcast and and they may have aspirations to be a singer and and they're thinking, you know, think back to when you were in middle school or when you were in elementary school and you didn't quite know if this was the direction that you wanted to take, even though you were starting to think about it. Um, what would you tell them? Um, I would I would say. Keep going for it. Keep trying. If mm -hmm. you stop trying, then you never know how far, like how far you could get. Okay. That's what I would say. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And so when you think of, of 
like who supports you, right? When you get into those those times when you don't know if you quite want to mm -hmm. keep going, like who would you say is your biggest supporters? Um, my dad and my mom tell me twenty four seven like you can't stop now, like you okay. you have to keep going, and mm -hmm. they were right. <laughs> <laughs> um, usually parents are right, mm -hmm. right? Even though you know when we're teenagers we don't want to admit it, right? Yeah. Our parents are right. Yeah, and that's and that's cool, and and so um, I would imagine you get to enjoy this with them as well. Yes, like, can you, can they, you they love doing that, it. So mm -hmm. my dad, he he manages all my social medias. Okay. Sometimes I don't even know when he posts things, and I go and look at them, and. Um, so your your dad your dad manages your social media, huh? Um, mine aunt. Well, he. He shares my stuff all the time. Okay. So, okay. and he helps me post things on Facebook. I'm okay. an Instagram and TikTok person, not a Facebook person. Wow. So he helps me with okay. that. Okay. All right. That's There's good. There's a lot. That's I good to know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because now you're opening up about your right. dad too. So mm -hmm. like, that's, I didn't know that, but <laughs> I like TikTok. So. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Okay. So, um, so when you when you think of those platforms, like, what do you, what do you like? share out what is your your team as i was going to call your dad or your your team like what do they normally share out um we put out a lot of views of me like singing and okay. how my journey's going and what's going on in my life mm -hmm. um i i post a lot of um i don't we just be all of me just, singing just my, some, my new music right. yep just having fun just, yeah sometimes we post um like hey it's friday like yeah. Hope you guys have a good weekend, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I Just tell you, any kind of content to make people listen, which is good, because mm -hmm. I, because I tell you, because that's what originally caught my attention is I, I saw your dad posting things on Facebook, because mm -hmm. um, I'm still, you know, I still do Facebook too, you know, but um, I saw that and that was just, just the amount of excitement, you mm -hmm. know, that that when when he when he shared that, um, I was impressed and, right. and and happy for you. Yeah, he tells me he always tells me to go look at the comments to make me like feel better about things, okay. like how people are so supportive. Okay. So okay. That helps me my confidence a lot. All right. Too. So 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 gonna throw some some fun stuff at you a little bit. Um, are you a Swifty? Oh, okay. So I have a song <laughs> called Kelsey. Okay. It's about Taylor Swift and Kelsey. Okay. I don't think you can call me a Swifty. Okay. I'm not like, oh my God, like I know I don't know everything about Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. Swifties know everything. I okay. don't. I love her old music. I have not listened to her new music okay. that much. Yeah, my um, my daughter's my um, youngest daughter's ten, mm -hmm. loves Taylor Swift, but she only likes her new stuff. Right. My oldest daughter is 24, and she only likes her old stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so there's you can't they can't they can't. I think it. I like her her old stuff because it's more country, and okay. that's that's me. I think that's probably why. Gotcha. But. Okay, tell us a little bit about the Kelsey song. What was the inspiration um, behind that? Actually, so I didn't know about, we went to Nashville to record two songs, which was Backbiting and One Girl to Another, which are not out yet. Okay. Um, and we were recording Backbiting, and then he was like, oh, you want to listen to this? We were supposed to record One Girl to Another the next day. Gotcha. Um, and he was like, you guys should listen to this. Like, we just wrote this. And uh -huh. I was like, okay. So he played it for us. And he, we were like, that's that's really good. Okay. And he was like offering it to us. I was like, well, we can't not take it. Like, look look at them right now. Mm -hmm. They're like, right. blowing up on the inter yeah. internet. On the internet. Um, and so we recorded one girl to another the same day instead of the next day, so mm -hmm. that we could do Kelsey the next day. Okay. Um, we listened to that song, I think, probably like 50 times. We all <laughs> knew it by that time, not just me. Right. I wasn't singing it because I didn't want to lose my voice because mm -hmm. um, it was a lot. I think we did a total of seven hours okay. um, of just recording. Um, and uh, we just did it. Yeah, and it's interesting you just said that too because like some of the artists that, that I really like and I'll listen to their stories and they'll say how, you know, they – you know, they go into the studio and, and the producers like play this track and they play this track and then then finally they like hear a track and they're like, you know what, I love it. Mm -hmm. I love that one and that's it, right? Right. My dad, he's like, What what songs are you thinking about? I'm like, I don't know unless I hear it. Mm -hmm. Um, like I don't know what song I wanna do unless I hear it. Like sometimes I have a little bit of vision but it's just I don't write, I don't make music yet. Okay. And unless somebody hands it to me, right, right, and, that, and that's hoping, okay. Yeah, hoping yeah. it's gonna get there soon. Right, and that and that'll come with time. I, right, I listen to um, the background stories of like Destiny's Child, and they talk about how um, before, you know, when they first got into it, they were given songs, and then all of a sudden, they started writing it, and it became who they were, and 
well, of course, Beyonce. <laughs> just kind of mm-hmm. kind of blew up that way. So that's exciting. So when you think of um, who will see this podcast as well, um, you know, current fans, future fans, what would you like to tell them about you? Um, I'm a shy person. I, you, when I talk to you, you probably wouldn't think so. Um, if I really, really know you, I'm not, I'm not shy at all. I okay. love sharing everything. Um, I, I do my school work. Okay. I'm a very, um, I, I hear 4.0. Yeah. That's a good. Yes. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. So, um, so see everyone, you can balance both yes, your you passion every, yes. and, yep. and sports. If and you sports? love sports, okay. you, you can do it. I okay. Mean, you just gotta, you just gotta try. All right. So what sports? Um, well, I play softball. Okay. I quit basketball this year to do this, to oh, do music. Just, I yeah, and I love I've also... That's okay. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, I had a few back injuries. I had spinal fusion when I was 12. That's probably another thing fans want to know. If, hey, but you know what? If, if, if There's Swifty fans, right? And now mm-hmm. there's going to be McKenna fans. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> and they're going to want to know everything about mm-hmm. you. So that's cool. That's cool. All right, so like finishing up, um, I like to ask this question. Who's your favorite person in the district? It could be from elementary school to middle school in to high district? school in the whole district. Yes. Well, I have to say my dad. I mean, <laughs> I can't say that no. was good though. I mean, if was... I had to pick, it'd be him to Sony and Mr. Okay. Lucian. Okay. All right. So we know obviously why you why you picked your dad. Mm-hmm. Um, tell us a little bit about why, why you would pick um, Lucian and Tosoni. Um, Lucian, I talk to him every day. He, I haven't even had him as a teacher. Okay. My friend takes me to him every day before I go to our class after mm-hmm. lunch, and we talk to him all the time. He's just he's the most fun person ever. And Tosoni, he's the same way. I, I could talk to him about anything. He's always there for me and our family. He's That's awesome. um, been a great like helper, coach, assistant yeah. coach, and now varsity mm-hmm. head coach, and he just. No matter what, he's always there for you. All right. Well, that's good. All right. So thank you for being on. Obviously, um, we at Harlem, we're behind you 100%. Um, We want to talk to whoever um, the individuals are that are responsible for bringing stuff over to the U.S. as well. So it can be number one. um, And we'll keep supporting you. So thank Thank you. Thank you. I did want to say also that I signed a record label. Okay. I signed with MC1. Okay. Um, Nashville, the orchard behind Sony with it. Okay. So um, that was a big thing this weekend. Right. So we have to go back there on next Tuesday. Okay. We have to go back to Nashville um, and record um, a music video for my new song that's coming out. That is exciting. Yes. A lot of travel, right? Yes, but. a lot. And then we have to go back in February mm-hmm. for a promotional thing for artists. Okay. So. Keep keep chasing your dreams like you like you said. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, that was an exciting, um, in my opinion, episode. Um, again, you know, we had a writer and we have a singer. And, and I think um, when you think of it, um, a lot of our, our students are doing a fantastic job. Um, and we need to, to be behind them 100% in any way that we can support them. And so, again, um, I am Harlem. You are Harlem. Uh, We are Harlem. Thanks for tuning in.